on sitting in my garage before my husband decides to throw it like the first one. It's rusted. I'll take it. I know you guys, huh? I'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> no, we'll take it. I, but yeah. I guess I don't get the concept of getting it back to the original shape okay. or the original. Is it just rust? As far as I know, yeah, because yeah. I got it from Adam, to, what, two years ago when he was selling them off at Oh, okay. Niehofer. Okay. The, the only thing you have to watch the ones that came from Lefebvre. I, I acquired one that came from Lefebvre one year. Yeah. And somebody had used it to make candles in. Oh. And it was just all wax on the inside. I had to burn that down to, I mean, it was nasty. It was nasty. It, it burned for three hours before, and it didn't smell any wax burning. Mm. But, okay, let's, let's walk Cheryl through it. You take your Dutch oven, right? Yeah. Just clean it. Get yourself some Scotch Brite. And or or some steel wool. Try not to use soap, because right. if you're using hot water, um, the the pores on the the cast iron open up, and whatever you're using will seep in. So just water okay. and uh, whatever your scouring material is. That just takes the rust off. Yeah. That takes the rust off. Once it's, it's clean, only the surface. It's not oh, that deep. Yeah. Once it's clean, here it'll be. It'll be almost a silver color. This area over here is where my sister-in-law hit it with the steel, with the with the wire brush, with the yeah. electric wire brush. So it, it hasn't gotten that hard black patina yet. But once it's clean, dry it off. Nice thin, even coat of some type of oil? a oil. I, I like to use oil. I like to use Pam. Uh, somebody I else. I like to use Crisco. Lard like Crisco. Crisco. So I'm not yeah. Tired. Just rub it on, put it in your oven or on your grill upside down so that any excess lard doesn't pool inside of it. Bake it at 350, 400, I like 400, uh, for about an hour. And just because you've taken it down to the bare metal, do it again. So once you pull it off for about an hour, let it cool a little bit, put another, mm -hmm. another coat of oil on it, bake it again, the lid too, and you've got yourself a brand new Dutch oven. I'll be fine. Because the outside is to reduce the rest of the outside. Yeah, all, all the way around, outside and inside. All surfaces. Oh, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. I didn't make that clear. Right. Does, does everybody else use Dutch oven handles for getting the tops off, too? With, with the boys? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You these, mentioned that. So. These, are, these are great. You can, you can do this. I noticed in Don's kit, you have, you have a bunch of the. Yeah, aluminum, yeah, the players yet, yeah. The aluminum yeah, yeah, players. Yeah, yeah, we also have a long box that someone made from work. It's, uh, oh, yeah, it's like spring metal. It's yeah. like a big uh, spring that has hooks on it. So it's long enough you can um, Stand up. You can also grab the, the coals as you're moving coals along. So it looks like a big uh, pond. Is what it looks like, except it's just a quarter inch rod that's bent with two hooks on it. So you can pick up the coals and move it. And then the hooks on the end are also designed to you know, pick up the oven like that. Wow. <coughs> And we talked about baking a little bit. Somebody said you put, you know, stones on the bottom, or you can put some uh, uh, ten stakes on the bottom, and that that lifts whatever your baking tray is off the bottom of the pan, so that you have a you, you essentially you built yourself a convection oven uh, because the the heat will flow around whatever you're baking. So the way we're going to show the, the Cub Scouts how to bake cookies this weekend is we're gonna we're gonna use this as our baking tin. And you put your, your chocolate chip cookie dough in spots on your baking tin. And then you take either, like, a, a, we have some demi toss cups. You can, this, this porcelain steel is good. You just stick your bowl or cup in the bottom of your Dutch oven. And this just spins. And if you're using something the size of this bowl in this configuration, you're up about 30 or 40% of the way in your Dutch oven, so you're almost in the middle and your cookies will just, just bake up and not burn at all. How do you get it out when it's so hot then? Pliers. Carefully. <laughs> <laughs> you can either use pliers. <laughs> I like these things. Okay. You can reach in and you can just, you can just you know, grab your plate and there you go. And what else works good for, for desserts? That I found out like a lot of times we don't have a lot of cake pot like we we're talking about making cakes and pies and they start doing that. Is early on just buy the foil pans at the grocery store, you know, because they'll fit in a 12 inch one. You buy the nine inch round pans or for the pie pans, they'll fit in there if you put the, the other blue plate on the bottom. Yeah, because I started looking for pie pans and 
cake pans are kind of expensive for the one or two times a year they're going to bake cakes right now. I know it's kind of wasteful throwing them away, but yeah, it works out. No, I mean, you know, it's less cleanup. And it's like, yeah, that, but I mean, it's, I kept looking at buying them, but they're so they're expensive. Those, those are, and those are more stuff we got to carry every time that we didn't, that they never use. And again, those are good enough to make pretty colors in the fire if you, if you burn a few of them. What, the oil? Yeah. Oil pans? Yeah. Yeah. The other thing to do, especially if you're like baking desserts or that kind of stuff where you might get more burning, if, especially if you're not spacing it, is I'll rotate the bottom one way after 10 minutes and then the top the other way just in 90 degree turns and that way if you do have a couple of hot coals that are grouped together, you're not going to burn one spot. Yeah, all the, all the literature says that. That's, a very, that's a very good. You take your pot and you just rotate it this way and then you rotate your room this way without lifting it up that high so the heat doesn't escape. You just turn your lid and so that, that the heat stays further away from the Has anyone tried all those Danish ovens or the ones where they cut the log with like six splits in it and you get the fire going and you put the power on top of it? Has anyone tried that one? I see them everywhere. Has anyone tried that camp mm -hmm. yet? Haven't seen them. It don't seem like you can buy them, but I also saw them online where you can cut the sixth and then if you mm -hmm. burn a fire in it, it makes the whole thing hot enough that you can use like, like a grill. I was wondering if anybody did, tried it. I was getting nervous. I haven't done, I haven't done it yet. I'm not listening to this. No, no, no. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You yeah. see nope. that? See I have no clue. Yeah, you see that Sendex or the log and one guy in Sendex grills it in like a It's kind of hollowed out the center. Hollowed out the center a little bit, but you can also make them yourself. There's online, I said, somewhere on my Pinterest page, I don't know how to make it, whatever. Yeah. I've seen it. It's called like a Danish, is it called Danish stuff? Yeah. Dutch, I don't like that. I mean, yeah, but they also have a Sendex big one. 